okay? Why do I not want my shirt on? Because it's my channel, that's why. Okay, we are going to beat the horse, the dead horse again. We're going to talk about the Kavanaugh thing. The newest Kavanaugh thing. Now, why is this such a big deal? Well, a lot of people on YouTube and the Second Amendment community, you know, the patriotic community, we talk about knives, guns, you know, pro-life, shit like that. Okay? Freedom, independent, all that good shit. Here's the thing. No American is free if one American is oppressed. That's the first thing. The second thing is if half of the United States Senate is willing to lynch a federal judge, in particular a Supreme Court justice, what's going to happen when they come after you? The Supreme Court is the last line of defense. After that, it's the mattresses, okay? And if they're willing to do this to him, what are they willing to do to you? Now, we've seen worlds where we have so-called you know, show trials. Okay, how, how does this start? How do you have a show trial? How, do you, how does this start? Well, the two examples, the two most prominent examples of what happens when there is no rule of law are Jesus and William Wallace, who coincidentally both died at age 33 approximately. Now, Jesus was a verbal revolutionary. William Wallace was a physical revolutionary. Now, Jesus, the crucifixion, they put the vertical beam into the stud, into the ground, and the horizontal beam was a very, very large beam that had a hole in the center. And what they would do is they would take the condemned outstretched arms and they would tie the beam to the arms. Keep in mind, 2,000 years ago, Jesus might have been 105 pounds. And they had him walk down the street like this. And remember the part of the, the Bible where he fell? When he fell, he fell like this, on concrete on his chest. That punctured the bag in which his heart sets in, and it caused his heart to leak blood. And when they crucified him, they picked him up, and the hole that corresponded with the vertical, with the horizontal beam, that hole was fitted over the vertical post in the ground, and he was hung there. And when you see the images of Jesus with his feet nailed into the footrest, okay, well, what they did was they bent his knees, they bent the knee back. And they leaned the knees into, they leaned the um, uh, ankles into the post and nailed them there. So he was actually like this, on the cross, hunched over, with his knees bent, with his ankles drilled into the post. And you basically can't breathe and you collapse in your own lungs. Hard way to die. William Wallace was dragged by a, by a horse four and a half miles. He was then hung for a few seconds and then stretched on a rack until his bones were shattered. He was then castrated. He was then opened. His intestines were pulled out. And according to historical records, he was alive when they ripped his heart out. And they beheaded him, cut up his arms and his legs. And if you see the movie on Netflix, The Outlaw King, about Robert DeBruce, they show one of his legs arrive in town. They put his head on the bridge, and they put his arms and legs to, to, to the four corners of the kingdom as a warning. 
Now also, in medieval law, they believed that you had to be buried facing east and rise and face God. And if you did not have a body, you could not do that, you went to hell. So by ripping his body apart and scattering the body and not allowing him to rise and face God, they believed in their minds they were damning him to hell forever. Okay, now that is what happens when there is no law. Th those are two pretty extreme examples. But that is what happens when there is no law. And that is what happens when you go to court and the judge already has you guilty and there is no lawyer, there is no jury, there is no defense. That is what happens, okay? Stalin used to say, you show me the man, I'll show you the crime. All right? That is what the world looks like when there is no order. And this is where it starts. It starts with this. It starts with politicians who disregard the law entirely and lynch their enemies. That's how it starts. And if they're coming after him, they'll come after you. Remember this. Federal judges have to voluntarily give up most of their rights, if not most of their First Amendment rights. They have a right to vote once a year, like we do, in private. Aside from that, they're not allowed to attend rallies. They're not allowed to have bumper stickers on their car. They're not allowed to have lawn signs. They're not allowed to belong to any political organization, like aside from Democrat or Republican. They're not allowed to belong to NRA, Brady Campaign, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, okay? Students for Life, okay? All those little political endeavors we belong to, they're not allowed. And I'm 99% certain they're not allowed to have social media. Because they have to actually be the physical embodiment of the law and they have to be 100% neutral. That is, a, that is how they compromise their own rights so that they can serve as the physical embodiment of the law. And Justice Kavanaugh, even though he was not required to, Justice Kavanaugh voluntarily gave up his right to vote because he doesn't want to have any allegiance to anybody, Democrat or Republican. And he wants to go into cases fresh because he knows as a federal judge, especially now on the high court, he can be asked to go against senators, governors, mayors, presidents. Okay? So they gave up their rights for you. Because they want to protect you. They want to serve the law. And they want to interpret the Constitution. And they want to protect the rule of law. They gave those rights up for you. Understand that. Now what happened was... Many years ago, when Justice Kavanaugh was an attorney, he was with working with Ken Starr for Bill Clinton's impeachment. And whether or not we think it was politically motivated, probably was politically motivated, Bill Clinton was impeached because he lied. He lied about an affair. He wasn't impeached for having an affair. He was impeached for lying about it. Now, maybe they shouldn't have asked about it, Maybe it wasn't their business, okay? But he was on one side of, of, of a legal argument. Now, a lawyer who was on the other side of the legal argument in this impeachment hearings, okay, that lawyer contacted the New York Times. And that lawyer said, this is a lawyer, keep in mind. That lawyer said that he heard that when Justice Kavanaugh was in college 30 years ago, he was at a party, someone took his penis out of his pants for him and forced his penis into a woman's hand. Now, this is an officer of the court who has a personal vendetta against the, the justice because a generation ago, 
they argued opposite sides of the case. And there have been lawyers that have argued against each other in court and then went out for a drink later. There have been lawyers that would argue against each other in a case and then six months later, they'd be working on the case together. Okay? They try not to take it personal. Okay? And I've seen lawyers on opposite sides of the table that are telling tongue jokes to each other because they try not to take it personal. But this was a lawyer who a generation ago argued against Justice Kavanaugh and harbored animosity. The lawyer called a newspaper which was prejudiced against America itself and the lawyer said that he heard that 30 years ago, okay, it was hearsay. Now, a lawyer repeating hearsay, okay? When you go to court, if you say, I heard, the judge will silence you. The judge does not want to hear what you heard. If you didn't see it with your own eyes, if you weren't there when it happened, it didn't happen. If you heard from someone, then the judge will say, that person will come in and that person will tell us what happened, not you. Okay, so right then and there you have a prejudicial statement that is almost certainly false. He heard, that heard, that heard, that heard, that heard, that heard. Okay, and the New York Times, when they published the article, the two women that were writing the article appeared on The View, I think, I saw a clip of them. They omitted the woman's name to protect her reputation. Think about that. They omitted her name to protect her reputation even though they were publishing an article to destroy another man's reputation. And the article, when they erased her name from the article, they also omitted a quote where she says, this never happened. The woman in question said, this never happened. And they took her name out of the article to protect her reputation, and they erased that part of the article entirely where it said, never happened, and they published the article. So they published a hearsay article given to them by a person who was prejudiced against the justice, and they omitted the part where the alleged victim and admitted it was a lie. I didn't make that up, someone else did. I never said that, ever. Now, that is slander, libel, defamation of character. And the fact that they went out of their way to omit the part where the alleged victim says it's a lie that someone else made up. That right there shows that they had malice towards him. Now, after the article was published and after it got the backlash and after the New York Times retracted the article, three presidential, can presidential primary candidates, one of them was Cory Booker, said publicly that Kavanaugh needs to be impeached because of his article. They said that after the article was proven false. And we remember Cory Booker, who was an attorney. Cory Booker, who called Justice Kavanaugh evil within two minutes of, of learning his name. Before he had ever seen a picture of Justice Kavanaugh. Okay, the same Cory Booker, who ran in and like a lunatic for, for, for every second he was in that hearing. The same Cory Booker who accused Justice Kavanaugh of hating women and black people. Okay? That is the mentality, my friends. We have sitting members of the Senate, presidential candidates, officers of the court, that are saying a sitting United States Supreme Court Justice must be impeached because of an article 
that was already proven false. Could you imagine a judge putting you in prison after the jury found you not guilty? Could you imagine a prosecutor recharging you after the judge dismissed the charges? Okay, could you imagine a jury that comes into court thinking you're guilty and not hearing any information? Can you imagine that? Because that is the world that we are this close to living in. Okay? We are this close, my friends, to living in a world where you can lynch someone. And ironically, this is exactly a year later after the other shit. And I saw some other clips that were uncovered that I didn't see last year. One clip, this is last year, Chuck Schumer standing at the podium of a press conference, big fucking surprise there, saying due process doesn't matter when we have the candidate in front of us. He's saying this after Christine Blasey Ford was caught lying. He called Justice Kavanaugh a serial rapist from the floor of the United States Senate in spite of the fact that Michael Avenatti, who himself is head of the prison, was representing that client. After someone is proven exonerated, sitting members of the Senate are calling them rapists, calling for their impeachment, calling for their incarceration, calling for their disbarment, assessing their character. Kirsten Gillibrand, who also tried to run for president this year, she actually said due process does not matter. Because we're not looking to put her in prison. A sitting United States Senator who a few months later launched a presidential campaign on the floor of the United States Senate saying publicly that due process does not matter. You need to pay attention because this is the world we live in. It's, I was watching Fox News, Fox Nation, which is a Fox News streaming service online you have to pay for. It. Okay, now Fox News, Fox Nation had a documentary. There's three parts. Part one is Justice is Judge Bork. I watched it a while ago. Part two is Clarence Thomas that just came out. And part three is forthcoming, which is Justice Kavanaugh. In Justice Clarence Thomas's case, they brought forward a woman who said 10 years after the fact that he sexually harassed her and if you'll notice once he was seated they left him alone and it's not except the fact that the woman lied true this is a sitting federal a sitting Supreme Court Justice who was accused of a crime 36 years later. The accuser was caught committing perjury, never prosecuted. A year later, a newspaper publishes a hearsay article and omits a critical point where the alleged victim says it didn't happen. And after all that, there are still members of the Senate that want him impeached. 
there is no rule of law, my friends. You must wake up. You must see this. Okay? Because this is the world they want you to live in. There is no law. There is no due process. There is no innocence. You're guilty because they say so. Thank you.